own energy. Uh, letting us do for ourselves what we've been relying on other countries to do for us. Uh, we, we have a wealth of solar energy, wind energy, not just in the plain states with the wind energy, but also off all of our coast up in the Great Lakes area. We have a wealth of solar power, uh, not just in the Sun Belt, but really on rooftops across America. Uh, we have uh, an extremely uh, rich opportunity for smart biofuels so we can start growing our energy, letting our farmers get into the game here. And all of those uh, different technologies, uh, uh, geothermal, uh, advanced hydro, all of them require uh, not just uh, good uh, engineers and scientists, but also marketers, also uh, 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 entrepreneurs, business people. So I would encourage you to really focus on that. The other thing I would say is that uh, some people say, oh, well, geez, I, I got to get out of school and start a solar company. I don't know how to do that. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that whatever you're passionate about doing, if, especially if you want to become an entrepreneur, you will have the opportunity to do that in a green way. If you want to start a, a, a hair salon, you can do that in a green way. If you want to start a, 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 an auto repair shop, you can do that in a green way. And you will be rewarded in the marketplace for making those choices because both consumers and governments are going to be encouraging you to hit those higher environmental standards. Okay, we have a great question from Billy Mitchell out of Jacksonville, Florida, who wants to know, are there small business grants for green businesses or how can small businesses become more green? Gotcha. Well, um, there, that's, there's a, a two-pronged answer to this question. If you want, just for everybody who's listening, if you want to know more about how to get government grants and contracts, uh, uh, recovery.gov uh, uh, is, is the main website to help you understand how you can plug in and how you can play. But there's a, a special website, and I want to make sure I get the name right, that is FedBizOps, F-E-D-B-I-Z-Ops, O-P-P-S, uh, .gov, that really lets you see where the contract opportunities are. And then Grants.gov lets you see where the, the grants are. And I encourage people to go and look at those two websites. They're being improved continuously. But I encourage people to go and look at those websites because you will be amazed at how many opportunities there are uh, to compete for contracts, uh, to compete for grants, to do any number of things that will uh, uh, help your business go forward. Uh, the other piece is that the Small Business Administration uh, is very interested in this whole question of uh, green entrepreneurs and helping to move, to move that agenda forward, making sure that our small businesses get a chance to uh, green up and clean up and become more profitable going forward. And so I encourage you to go to their, their website as well. Okay. We have uh, a lot of great questions coming in online. Okay. I'll, um, I'll answer We have uh, Annie Reinhardt, who is writing us from Burlington, Vermont, who wants to know, how are we going to get people who are living in poverty trained and uh, in for green jobs? Yeah, well, um, uh, that's really the passion of Secretary Hilda Solis. One of her passions is to make sure that people all across America and across different income levels can have the opportunity to be a part. For, uh, for instance, uh, you know, to talk about another great uh, uh, secretary, um, our Secretary of Agriculture is committed to making sure that people who are living in rural America who also need jobs, who also need opportunities, are plugged in. And for instance, in rural America, you know, we often talk about the solar panels going up in cities. We often talk about the wind turbines being manufactured in cities. But uh, where will those wind turbines be deployed? They will tend to be deployed in rural areas. So there are jobs there. Uh, if they're going to be deployed on big pieces of land, we have the opportunity to choose now to, to grow food crops, which is important, but we can also grow energy crops. So uh, we're talking about smart biofuels. We also have a lot of uh, fire danger that is built up in some of our forests around America. Some people are, are suggesting that there is an opportunity here, and we have money in our recovery package, to go, uh, to, to go for wood to energy, going back to wood pellets, which actually don't add to our global warming pro uh, problem, but do create more rural job opportunities. Also, some people don't think about that much, is land restoration. We have places in America where uh, uh, the land has been uh, damaged. As you restore that land, you can do it in a way that it captures and stores more carbon in the soil, pulls that out of the atmosphere, greens up, and is cap uh, uh, greens up that landscape so it captures more carbon in the plants. Well, guess what? Now you've got a beautiful area, but it's also providing a service of capturing carbon, helping to cool the planet down. 
that is also a great job for rural America. So there is money in the recovery package and orientation in the recovery package to link those kinds of job opportunities in rural America uh, with job training through the Department of Labor. Okay, great. Um, we have another question coming out of um, Syracuse, New York. I okay. think you're going to like this question because it's on energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, so we can talk about weatherization. But uh, from Michael DeRose um, of Michael. Syracuse, New York, will grants be made available for people to convert their homes to more energy efficient? Uh, they, yes. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, let me talk to you about this particular program, which is, uh, as Christy knows, my passion. <laughs> I will try not to go on and on about it, but it's my favorite thing that we're doing. We are spending $5 billion, with a B, on energy efficiency for homes, especially for people of modest means, people who are about 200% of the poverty line and below, uh, people of modest means who really cannot afford to have uh, their energy bills going through the roof in the summer, going through the roof again in the winter, because their homes are just so leaky and inefficient that they literally are just sending, send, literally sending money out the window. Uh, in 2008, the federal government spent a total of $200 million across the whole country to help fix that problem. The recovery package has $5 billion, from $200 million to $5 billion, which means that there are going to be literally thousands of families, tens of thousands across the country, who, who will be paying less on their energy bills. But that's not the only uh, benefit of this program. The same dollar that is being used to cut uh, someone's energy bill is also going to cut unemployment because we're going to be putting people to work to go and retrofit all those buildings. It also, that same dollar that cut the energy bill and cut unemployment, will also be used to cut uh, pollution because our power plants won't have to work so hard. Uh, if a home is made 30% more energy efficient, there'll be 30% less pollution coming out of a, a smokestack someplace. And it also should make those homes more valuable because a drafty home should be more, less valuable than a good, comfortable, energy efficient home. So these are humble, hardworking energy efficiency dollars that we have put into the recovery package. Uh, I am excited that the vice president really wants to figure out a way to keep that going, keep that train moving, uh, not only for the people who are of modest means, but really for all Americans. And I think as we go forward, you will uh, see uh, uh, much more uh, momentum in this direction. Also, I want to brag on HUD. Uh, um, the uh, uh, Secretary Donovan was talking about the, I think, quarter million uh, quarter billion dollars, $250 million that HUD has to green up public housing and assisted housing so that people who are very, very low income can uh, have those benefits in terms of comfort and also governments can spend less money on those properties as well. So yes, energy efficiency is a big part of the agenda. Okay. We have a question from Andrew Reback from Philadelphia who wants to know, um, you know, there are a lot of people who talk about going green, dismissing it as hyper fad. Yeah. How can we ensure that these changes towards a green economy are indeed sustainable and result in long-term changes? How do we do this? Well, I mean, first of all, it, it really is uh, something that is not a, a fad. We're talking about a convergence point where so many uh, different uh, factors are coming together to make energy efficiency and clean energy a big economic play. It's one thing if it's just sort of a niche thing, just something you want to do because you, it makes you feel better about yourself. I want to be green because I love the planet. That's good. That's a good driver, and we need to keep that as a driver. But it's not just making people feel better that really changes things. It's when people can feel better about what they're doing and also earn money doing it, can also launch businesses doing it, and that's what you're beginning to see. So for instance, uh, as our Congress moves forward. It is making very, very uh, strong progress toward uh, creating the incentives for clean energy to be the profitable form of energy in America. Well, once we get the rules right, the public rules right, then we can unleash innovation and enterprise. Then suddenly you're going to see uh, American business, American entrepreneurs, American innovators jump in and we'll have as much innovation in our energy sector in the next 10 years as we had in our information sector in the, in the, in the last 10. And you know, when, when you see Congress moving in that, in that way, when you see states and local uh, governments moving in that way, tribal governments moving in that way, and much more importantly, when you see entrepreneurs and venture capitalists moving in that way, you can be pretty sure this thing is going to go forward. Uh, and uh, the, the, the main thing is who in this audience 
will be part of making sure that it